everyone. Um, I am um, super excited to be doing the first ever Q&A for Video Club, which I've been talking about doing forever, and I'm finally getting around to doing it. Um, and uh, no one's hopping on here live, but it is kind of the middle of the day on a Tuesday, so I'm not wildly surprised about that. I'm assuming most of you folks are going to be watching the recording of this. Hey, um, also being supervised by a puppy. Um, and uh, I have three questions today from folks. So unless someone wants to hop on here um, sort of last minute and ask something, I'm going to answer those. And um, if you didn't get your question in, I'm going to be doing this again um, in September. So that's going to be the next chance to ask questions. Um, oh, my God. OK, you're going to have to do that somewhere else. You want to meet the puppy? Of course you do. Okay. This is Rocky. So you hear weird noises. Picture that little monster running around. Um, all right. So questions for today. Number one from Kyla. I walk my dog uphill every morning and my hamstrings are super tight. I've been doing yoga to offset the walking, but I still have pain. Is there something specific you can recommend? Um, awesome question. Uh, so it sounds like it's like more than tight hamstrings. Like if it's pain, then um, you're starting to get into the territory of like something's not like functioning quite right when you're walking. There are a lot of different things that could be going on. But if you came into my office and talked about that, I would be looking first at your feet and ankles, especially if you're walking uphill a lot that requires a lot of ankle flexion. And if you don't have a lot of flexibility in your ankles and you don't have a lot of like active strength to really be able to move and articulate through your feet, your hamstrings might be really overworking as you're going uphill to compensate for the fact that your ankles can't do the job that they're really supposed to be doing. So what I would suggest as, a, all right, you're going to, not nah, take that away. Got to find a less loud toy. Um, <laughs> what I would suggest is before you go for your uphill walk next time, nope, down, is to um, both stretch out your calves, but also do what's called tibialis raises. Um, if you're having a hard time getting a visual, you can look them up on the internet, but basically you're gonna stand with your butt against the wall and your feet a little bit away from the wall. And you're gonna try to lift up your toes like you're trying to touch them to your shins and squeeze and lower tap and lift again and try to do about 20 of those. And if you have a hard time lifting the balls of your feet up off the ground, you're trying to lift everything up and like put your weight into your heel. If you have a hard time lifting them up very far. They get really tired after, you know, 15, 20 reps. There's a good indication there that that might be an excellent avenue of exploration for you. You can do one or two sets of those, then go for your walk. See if there's any difference at all, even a little bit of difference, because that's kind of how you suss out if you're on the right trail to figuring out what's going on. Because if you're stretching out your hamstrings, stretching out your hamstrings, and then nothing's really getting better, it's probably not coming from the hamstrings. The hamstrings are reacting to something else that's going on. Feet and ankles are a good possibility. Um, please let me know how that goes. I'm super curious if that tibialis raise makes any difference. Question number two. For Ingrid, what is the average amount of time it takes to learn a split? I've been trying for three months, about two to three times a week, and my progress feels really slow. Is that normal? Um, I wish I could tell you that there is like a normal way to progress through splits, but everybody is different. It sounds like you're doing the right things. Like, you know, two to three times a week is a really good amount to be training. And um, I guess my question for you, I don't know if you're using the videos on video club or if you're doing something else or if you're just sitting in splits. My question is, are you doing a lot of passive stretching? If you're spending a lot of time just sitting in a split, my advice would be to start to work on your active flexibility a little bit more. And there are drills for that in, in the um, splits prep one and two, especially have a lot of active work um, to try to strengthen your muscles. Because sometimes when your body is really resistant to change like that, it actually needs strengthening rather than stretching um, to build that active flexibility, that end range strength. And it's not until you kind of get that strength, get that ownership of your end range that your body will allow you to start to go deeper into something. Um, really with splits training, 
the split itself, like actually being in the split is sort of the cherry on the Sunday at the end of the Sunday of training, that there's a lot of other stuff that goes into having a nice split where the split is sort of the end result, but not the thing that you train as much. Um, if that makes sense. So to really work on like laying on your back and lifting your leg into a hamstring stretch and, and moving your leg around in that hamstring stretch to work on different lunge varieties, to work on glute strengthening, inner thigh strength, all of these different things that are the components that go into a split. And then at the end of your training session, boom, 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 you put it all together. Bloop, and there's the cherry on the end of that training session, which is actually doing the splits. So um, let me know how that goes um, and if that jives with what you're doing. But um, the, I, you're, I promise you you're normal um, and, and that things will come. But if you feel really like you've plateaued, it's time to change up your strategy a little bit. And usually that's when I recommend more strength. Um, all right. Number three. Last question for Jason. I get really bad neck pain from working at a desk and my friend keeps recommending the chiropractor. What are your thoughts on chiropractors? Um, so there's a huge variety and quality of chiropractors. Some of them I like a lot more than others, but here's my caveat with all chiropractors. If you find yourself addicted to going to the chiropractors, you go to the chiropractor, they adjust you, you're like, I feel great. And then you come home and then a week later, you're like calling up your chiropractor again, like a junkie looking for a fix then something's going on, right? Because what the chiropractor does is they kind of, they, they loosen you up. They like kind of move your body around and move your joints around in a way that kind of loosens things up. Oh, it's like, feels better. But something's going on in between chiropractic visits that's making your body tight again. And a chiropractor isn't really, I mean, at least an adjusting chiropractor goes crack, 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 is not addressing the root cause that's making you tight is making your neck tight, right? Now, you're working at a desk. A lot of people working at a desk get that tech neck problem, right? This thing. Um, I would look at your desk setup. Do you need a different prescription for glasses? Because that's often a huge culprit. Um, other eye stuff can really contribute to tight neck, chronically tight neck. Um, breathing, uh, abdominal strength, back strength. There are so many things that that uh, you can look at as potential culprits for the reason, the root cause that that neck keeps getting back. Because what can happen is you keep going to the chiropractor, the chiropractor keeps adjusting your neck and, uh, <laughs> and, um, and after a while, that actually can contribute to destabilizing your neck joint. Like you don't want to have to get adjusted over and over and over again, over time. I have been there. It's not a good thing to fall into. So that's my, my sort of general overview on chiropractors. Like it can be really good every once in a while. If you like pop a rib out or you sleep funny and you're just like, I just want someone to, to put me back. I, I will occasionally use chiropractors for that. But if I find that I have to keep going back, uh, something's going on that I need to address that the chiropractor, unless they have other modalities that they do, is probably not going to be able to help you with. You might want to look into acupuncture, but you should definitely look into what is going on with your movement and what is going on with your eyes. All right. Um, so that is it for today. Short and sweet, but I had a blast. And um, I'm going to post this on YouTube and um, on the video club channel. So I hope that I hear from more of you and thanks for being video club members. Mwah. Happy bendings. Oh, and next one, like I said, is going to be mid-September. So looking forward to that. I will let you know the exact date.